reading of scripture. An ancient prophecy which precedes the day when a new ruler shall come forth for Israel out of David's city of Bethlehem in Ephrathah. A reading from the book of Micah. You, O Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she is in labor. She who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. of Jesus coming into the world to make an offering in his body for our sanctification. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. <clears throat> when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifices and offers you, offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me in burnt offerings and sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, see God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book it is written of me when he said above you have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings those are offered according to the law then he added see I have come to do your will he abolishes the first in order to establish the second it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. The word of the Lord. Let us stand and say together a song of Jerusalem. Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love her, rejoice, rejoice for her. All you who mourn over her, that you may drink deeply with delight from her happy breast. And thus says the God, I will extend peace to her like a river, the wealth of nations like an overflowing stream. You shall nurse me, carry on her arm, and you shall nestle in her lap. As a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You shall be seated from our touching toils. You shall flourish like the grass of the fields. 
Mary's visit to her kinswoman Elizabeth and this humble woman's song of thanksgiving to the Savior God who has called her to be the mother of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. In those days Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and explained with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? And as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she, is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Holy One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words of my mouth, the meditation of all our hearts, and every action of all our lives be always acceptable to you, Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, this week we had a very different lesson from the ones we've had the last several weeks. If you recall, in the other weeks of Advent, we heard from John the Baptist and a couple other prophets, and they were talking of judgment. In fact, you could fairly honestly say those other lessons began with threats. This week, we hear promises of joy. I've always been intrigued by denominations and individuals who, who put a major emphasis on Mary. Even though I spent a few years in the Roman Catholic Church, that was one practice I never fully embraced. But this week, as I was reflecting on the readings, I got a, a better understanding of it. Many people have told me that the, the focus on Mary because she's more approachable than God. Well, let's set aside the debate over whether any of the saints or angels can be approached in prayer. That's a can of worms I'm not going to open today. And let's just consider the concept. It's interesting, for such a, a major figure in Christian history, Mary never performs any miracles as such. Mary, with the exception of the Magnificat we heard today, doesn't teach. And her, her quiet, humble life, I think, is the reason she's appreci appreciated and seems so approachable. Peter began as a simple fisherman, but before the story is over, he's preaching to thousands of people. Mary is a simple country girl and never tries to be anything else. Mary's simplicity, I believe, is what makes her so attractive. The, the others in the Bible stories and the Gospels can seem to be above our level somehow, but, but not Mary. Everything about her is quiet and simple. Even when she's told she would be bearing the Christ child, it's in a quiet, private setting. In today's reading, we heard the first time that Jesus was acknowledged as the Messiah by someone else, and again... It's in a quiet setting with only one other person present. Mary is approachable. I submit to you that Mary also is in many ways the model for us. And not just because her, her humble approach to life, although that's certainly important. Now I submit to you that Mary is the model for our lives because of what she did. In the Eastern Orthodox tradition, which means in our ancient traditions, Mary is known as the God-bearer. 
some say it the God carrier, the God bearer, though I think is a better term. And, and that is what our model, our role in the world should be. We are to, to bear, to carry Christ into the world. And the first step in doing that is to appreciate Mary's receptivity to God's plans and her willingness to participate. That would be a major step for most of us. Being receptive to God's plans requires us to be, first of all, open and alert to know God's plans. This takes listening for God's words. I know some people, they say they can actually hear God speak, and, and I admit to some jealousy. God speaks to each of us in different ways. I tend to be running too fast, both in body and mind, to listen quietly. I finally accepted that as simply not my style. Sometimes I wish it was, but I have to be who I am. For me, I tend to hear God either in my reading or in my writing. Many times when I'm reading, I get past a certain point and I go, huh? And have to go back and look at it again and reread the passage and study and reflect on it and hear God's words in it. This happens both with scripture and with other works. For example, last week we heard John the Baptist say, among other things, that anyone who has two coats should give one to a person who has none. Now I've read that passage a hundred times and probably preached on it at least ten times. But this week, I heard something new in it. This week I heard God say something to me that I had missed in the past. My heart and my mind and my spirit were open to hear God say, you have to be alert to see that the other person has no coat. In other words, we can't follow John's instructions until we see the needs that the other person has. And in my writings, it seems like most weeks my fingers type out more than I intended to say. As I prepare a sermon or other writing, I find myself learning. I find myself hearing God speak to me in new ways. And this week, the humble receptivity of Mary struck me in new ways. Again, I knew the story. I knew it well. But God opened me up to appreciate the story. But appreciation of the teaching is just the first step. Acting out of that appreciation takes us to new places in our lives. Notice, notice what Mary said. My soul magnifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. That's beautiful poetry, but it's also a very fascinating image. At first, in fact, it can sound, well, maybe not wrong, but just not quite right. After all, how can my, my soul make God greater than God already is? But think about it. When you take a, a magnifying glass and, and magnify something, we don't make that any bigger. We make it clearer to our eyes. We can see it better. So what Mary is saying is that her soul is helping her see and know God better. And a rejoicing spirit, not, not just rejoicing, but rejoicing in God my Savior. Have you ever noticed how humble that language is? We, we use the, the language of Savior and salvation a lot, but I'm not sure we ever reflect on what it really means. See, it means that first of all, we have to acknowledge and accept that we need a Savior. A person down at the, down at the beach caught in a riptide might not notice they're being pulled out to sea. Consequently, they don't know to call for help for a savior. Mary, the one theology says was born without sin, acknowledges her need for a savior. How can we who are so covered with our personal sin do any less? Move down a line and, and Mary continues in the same vein. For the mighty one has done great things for me. I want to suggest something for you to think about this week. And that's that possibly the most extreme and needed transition for us as people trying to be full Christians is not even acknowledging our need for saving. 
maybe the most extreme and needed transition or learning for us is that the Mighty One has done great things for us. At least that was and continues to be a major issue for me. I tend to see too many things as my accomplish accomplishments without giving credit to God. Have you, have you ever noticed how many people are willing to blame God for things, but never give God the credit? I have learned, or, or, or to be more honest, I am learning to be aware of all the great things the Mighty One has done for me. I was created with gifts and talents that make possible everything that I do accomplish. I have been blessed with people who have mentored me and, and led me to be better than I otherwise would have become. And notice that Mary calls herself blessed. On reflection, you might say this is kind of a, a strange word for her to apply to herself at this point in her life. She is a, a pregnant woman who has never known a man. She's living in a society that does not accept an unmarried pregnant woman. She's almost certainly being shunned by the people around her. That may be, in fact, be why she went to see Elizabeth, to get some peace. Her husband wanted to divorce her. And whether she fully understands or not, this, this baby she is carrying will dramatically shake up the world and her life. With all that going on, with all those consequences, it's very difficult to call Mary blessed. But that's what she calls herself. Can we see ourselves as blessed by God? When God provides a task for us, when God explains the dream for us, can we step back and say we are blessed? Yet that's exactly what we are. God has allowed us, even encouraged us, to create the better world God intended and intends. What an honor. What a blessing. A major part of what God has in mind for us is to be like Mary and carry Jesus into the world. This world needs desperately to know Jesus, the real Jesus, the caring, loving Jesus, yes, but also the Jesus that's willing to allow people to turn away. There is a, a strength, even, even a sternness in Jesus that, that we in the world sometimes miss. The world desperately needs to know the full Jesus and we are called to carry that Jesus into the world. But let's not forget that we're called to carry Jesus into this world with an attitude similar to Mary's. I like to say we are to be assertive, but not aggressive. We should be assertively seeking to help the world at large and individual people know, love, and follow him. Feeding a family at Christmas is a wonderful thing we should do. But we are to go beyond that one act. We are to take the love that is God out into the world, helping the world to change so that there's always enough food is where we are headed. That's what the loving God wants us involved with, the things that change the world both individually, one person at a time, and society and broad. Carry Christ into the world.